Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's Ken Dunn. You're watching the No Money Real Estate Podcast, the show that makes it all come together in real estate investing. And today we're going to be talking to Simon Yen. Simon Yen is an expert in condo flipping. I know you've never heard about it before. We got to break away to the intro and I'll bring Simon onto the show right after this. Hey, my name's Ken Dunn and I'm a real estate investor. I want to welcome you to the No Money Real Estate Podcast. On this show, I'm going to interview elite level real estate investors from all over North America. And I'm going to help you to see one thing that all successful real estate investors have in common. They built their portfolios without using a dime of their own money. I've got a portfolio of $300 million in real estate. That includes resorts, apartment buildings, commercial buildings, and I built the entire portfolio without using a dime of my own money. Real estate is a business that anybody can get into, but the strategies that those Titan real estate investors use to build massive portfolios have been kept secret for decades. Now, because of this show, I'm gonna reveal them to you. So let's get started. All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, I'm super excited to be here today with Simon. Thanks for coming into the studio man thank you ken for having me listen um we're going to talk about condo flipping and you know it's funny because i thought i knew everything there was going on in real estate and then you and i were having this conversation together and right out of the blue you told me about condo flipping i didn't even know you'd do it you were the multifamily guy in my mind <laughs> but let's start off just generally speaking what does condo flipping actually mean actually uh I didn't take notice of it because I'm doing it every day. I do have done literally thousands of those uh, condo renovations by now. And uh, until I start putting it down on paper, I figure out, wow, this is really something that I need to, I feel obligated now to share it back to the community. In, in short, to answer your questions, yep. really condo flipping is about finding dilapidated like condo unit that is dated, outdated. Uh, you can see them like back in the 50s kind of decor yeah. and then the, they have like rundown, leaking, leak, water leakage and all that kind of uh, uh, characteristic. Those are the best candidates that would fit the criteria of a condo flipping. And what you do is buy those at a low price and then you do the renovation in 30 days and then you... Uh, stage it beautifully and get the top market price. So when I'm when I'm thinking about flips, I mean the flip, you know, doing flips is a pretty normal part of real estate investing in the journey, right? Like whenever I'm talking to somebody who's just getting started in real estate investing, I tell them they should start by doing flips because that's where you can learn the most and you're going to make those profits really quickly. But I never thought about condos specifically until I talked to you about this. There's some real valid reasons why somebody should think about focusing specifically on condos as opposed to other types of properties they can flip. What are some of the things that come to your mind? Like the reasons you'd say, hey, if you're going to do flips, do condos. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the best choice for especially for new investor because you have a lot more certainty when it comes to condo because you're not doing anything structural. Uh, and you're not changing the location of the plumbing uh, location because you can't because you can it's all pre uh, precasted into concrete and you're not supposed to touch it without like an engineering. So only the lipstick. That's right. Only yeah, the, yeah. How long does one of these things normally take to do a, like a condo flip from the day you close until you've sold it? Uh, usually, I would say conservatively speaking, four to six months, and majority of that time is for the buyer for their 90-day uh, closing clause when they, when they present but us I, an offer. Right. So I'm talking about like from when you actually get a place under contract until you've got a, a contract to sell it. So not not the closing of oh, the property. Okay. But I'm talking more about like from when you first own it till you get the renovations, till you get it listed again, until you've got a contract in your hand. About two months. Two months. Yeah. And I think that's the big thing that I want everybody to understand if you're thinking about doing this. And we're, don't worry, we're going to unpack this a lot. But if I'm looking at, I've, I've flipped lots of houses, Simon. It, it takes me on average five to six months to do one of these things. Yeah. So I would say for that two months, first is the couple months you talk to the condo corporations to, uh, to formally apply uh, your renovation application. And then your actual renovation portion is, takes about 30 days. Because again, you're not dealing with any of the mechanical. You're not changing windows. You're not right. having to do new heaters. I mean, most of the houses 
that I flip, I'm putting new heating systems in. I'm putting tankless hot water heaters in. I'm putting new electrical panels in. You're not doing any of that in a condo. None of those. Because it's the condo corporation that deals with all That's that. Right. So that's right. That's freaking brilliant. It's, it's brilliant. What are some of the issues? If somebody's looking at condos, what are some of the issues they're going to have to pay extra special attention to that might not exist in a host situation? That's a great question. I think the key is be respectful when you uh, talk to the corporate management office. Make sure that you oblige to their rules into as much as reasonable mm -hmm. uh, and negotiate it fairly and respectfully in the process. Do not go behind their back, otherwise you come back and bite you in a very serious bad way. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's that's one of the nuances of condos. If I if I buy a house to flip. The day I close, I'm just going to start ripping it apart. But yep. there's another level of permissions, I guess. You have to yeah. get permission to do the work with they the condo usually, corporation. They will usually give you an application form, rental, rental application form. It basically, very simply speaking, outline what you're going to do. I'm going to paint the unit. I'm going to change the flooring. I'm going to uh, put in a new kitchen, uh, maybe a new bathroom. Uh, rental, uh, an existing bathroom, something like that along the line and tell them this is what we our intention is. Can you approve it? Once they approve it, then you, you're good to follow, good to go. How long How long do those approval processes take with these condo boards? And are, like when, if I think about it, every one of these condo corporations has a board made, made up of its members. So is there any consistency in how long it takes or is it different from building to building? Uh, I would say majority of them within days. Usually they can get back to you. They're the odd ones once in a while that might take a week or two, but that's kind of the what I have experienced based on the thousands of units that I ran over. Yeah, yeah, totally. And then what are some of the things that, like when I'm thinking about a new person that might be hearing this show and is getting excited about doing this, what are some of the things that people should keep in mind when they're looking for the right condo to do this with? The the main thing is about lift. I think the 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 keyword lift here is that you got to make sure that whatever purchase price you are at, uh, you will be able to see an after renovated price in a comparable that show about two hundred thousand dollars difference. That is the key uh, indicator for the first step of success in the getting into a condo flip. Hey, if you're watching the video show on YouTube, you make sure you hit that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel. If you like the content that we're giving you here, if you have any questions for us, go ahead and hit the comments and ask all the questions you want. Our team will check back on the questions regularly. And of course, if you're hearing this in audio on the podcast, then don't, don't leave without giving us a nice rating for what we're doing. Um, I love, I, I think it's ridiculous that that I didn't think of this on my own to do this with the amount of real estate investing that I do. Let's talk about the money. Like if I'm if I'm doing a flip on a house, I kind of structure the project. So I'm gonna walk away with this at the end after all the taxes, the commissions are paid with about 100 to 150 grand. That's what I'd like to see. What do you like to see in a condo that you know it was worth doing? Um, I'm a very conservative and a very number focused guy. So. So in, in usually I would say around fifty thousand dollars is my target to uh, condo flip projects. Uh, that said, because of the volume that I do, I have seen upwards of two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I have seen thirty thousand dollars. But I would say that on a, when I underwrite a project, I would like to target start with like a fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, and then uh, the rest, if you do it consistently and persistently, you will get the result at least that and beyond. But I mean, if you do, like if you can do a condo in 30 to 45 days or 60 days, you're saying you can do more of them. So you Absolutely. can still make millions of dollars a year flipping condos. Yeah, you can, even if you do it sequentially, you can do six based on that formula. And if you do it concurrently and some of them overlapping, then the number is unlimited as far as I'm concerned. I guess the other thing too is like, you know how much I love short-term rentals. You could also take a look at a strategy depending on what your financing is to carry the property. Maybe if, if the building allows it, even keep a couple and do short-term rentals or long-term rentals. It's a gateway, isn't it? That's a great strategy. I'm going to look into it right away now. <laughs> <laughs> now, when it comes to um, like actually doing the rentals and getting the work done, what are what's some advice you would have for people in terms of what work they should do themselves? When should they hire people to do it? What's what's some of the guiding principles you have for your projects? I 
usually when I say the two hundred thousand dollar lift, that is a higher an experienced general contractor who have experience working in the condo environment. I find that general contractor who has or who has not often will have a very big gap in terms of the quotation when it comes to condo renovations. People who would be able who have many experience in the condo renovation, then they would give you a reasonable price. The one that more accustomed to house renovation or basement renovation, they would not know the intricacy yeah, of yeah. a condo. So that would be the first tips that I would say. In terms of if if there are some times that you don't find the lift that I mentioned earlier, um, then then you have to do some of the work to kind of uh, save cost when the renovation costs. So demolition would be definitely one of the main area. The flooring, the painting, those are the normal uh, common uh, culprit uh, of uh, candidates that we should choose to potentially do it on, on your own. So now that you've done a bunch of these condo flips, um, are you leaning towards them now in your own business? Are you still looking for houses to flip and bigger properties or are you just like in the condo sweet spot now? Oh, I love condos. I, I will never get out of it. I was, I'm doing it. I, as a matter of fact, I just secured a contract before I come in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I get, I get it, right? Because if you if you look at doing a house, it's it's that that all that other stuff is the most expensive stuff. Like having to put new windows in, having to put a new roof on it, having a new heating system, water system, like all that. You don't have to do any of that stuff. None of those. So to walk me through an average project, like if you're doing. A whole condo project um, based on all the ones that you've done. Like, what's the average you see? What are the things you're going to do most often in renovations to get the most lift? Oh, I, it's a complete rental uh, on the on Got the, the whole place. Got the whole place. I would take down the kitchen, take down the flooring, take down all the doors, uh, take down the whole bathroom, and just rebuild them. Like, so the first step is really about demolitions. The second step is if you need to do the plumbing work and then the electrical work, then you would do the um, uh, the wall in terms of plaster repair and painting. And then from there, you will do the flooring and then you do the installation at the at the very end and then staging. And I haven't it's beautiful. I haven't done any of these condos yet. So I'm, like my mind's just racing with thoughts on this. And like I said, guys. If you have any questions about this, if there's any thoughts that Simon's giving you right now, go into the comments and ask the questions. We'll definitely make sure that those questions get answered. The big thing I was think, just thinking about in my mind, I just did a place here in Whitby that I bought for 600 grand. I put 200 grand into it and got it appraised at 1.4. But when I look back at what I did in that property to create that type of lift, uh, we ripped out a couple walls that weren't load-bearing walls, and we turned this 1970s classic small rooms everywhere into this big, beautiful, open-concept house. Do they have, like, are, are the walls and condos all load-bearing, or can you do that same type of thing where you can open them up? Well, they are load-bearing, and they are not load-bearing wall within, even within a condo. So the non-load-bearing wall, as long as you... Um, Get the approval from the con uh, condo board. You could take them out. Take those out. I've done many times before. Open concept is the current one of the current trend that people like to see. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they feel the more spacious when it comes to uh, the open concept in that sense. That's awesome, man. I could keep asking you questions forever, but <laughs> our, our times come to an end. How can people stay in touch with you? What's the easiest way to find you? You got a website or something? Uh, condo flipping dot info. Please, uh, and I, I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. So I look forward to uh, connecting with all of you. Hey, friends, if you want to know more about condo flipping, he's the condo flipping king. You just have to go to www.condoflipping.info. And like I said when I started this, if you want me to keep doing this podcast, I need your support. Go ahead and give me one of those beautiful five star ratings on the podcast channel that you're on right now. If you're on YouTube, smash the subscribe button. Turn on those notifications, put some comments in the chat. The more activity we're getting, the more feedback we're getting from you, the more shows we're gonna do. We'll see you on the next show. For Ken Dunn here and Simon Yen, thanks for being with us today.